Low network connection. I'm, I'm looking like I'm not getting a good connection here. Can anybody hear me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory tonight, God. Hallelujah. Hoping everybody can hear me tonight. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm fired up tonight. Hallelujah. The Lord said it's time to bring back the glory into the church. Hallelujah. We got to bring back the glory, okay? The glory is the reputation of God. The doxa kavod is the weight, the glory of God, the brightness, the sunlight splendor of God, God's reputation, the doxa, the weight, the weighty presence, the manifestation of God, the shekinah glory is like a manifestation of the glory cloud. I'm going to go through, I don't know if my scriptures got on there, but I wanted Exodus 19, Exodus 33, uh, Exodus 40, and there, and those areas I want to show you. Uh, Moses, and we're talking about, and also First Kings chapter 8, uh, where the temple of Solomon, the glory of God, uh, and I'm going to also go where the, the glory was departed actually at a time in the days of Samuel, and there was uh, Hophni and Phinehas were the sons of Eli, the priest, this is uh, in First Samuel chapter 3 and 4, and the glory had departed because the priests in the temples were backslidden. They were sleeping with the women that were at the temple gates. Uh, uh, Samuel was born out of, of Hannah, which we know about that story. Uh, Hannah's uh, prayer, she dedicated Samuel to the Lord. And it said there, in those days, the visions of God was, were, he didn't, we didn't have many visions. We didn't have a lot of manifestations of the glory at that time. But in the days when God called Samuel, he called back to, to the glory of God. The, the Ichabod means the, the glory had departed. So because of these, the curse of these priests that went away from the Lord, and you can find this in First Samuel chapter one through four or five, somewhere in there. But they, the, the, they called them Ichabod prophets because they literally the glory had departed. But tonight the Lord said He wanted to bring back the glory into the church, the reputation of God, the brilliance, the majesty. Doxa is the word. Kavod is the weighty presence of God, the weighty glory. The Shekinah is the is the glory, the the cloud of the Lord, the glory cloud that we know in First uh, Kings chapter 8 in the temple of Solomon that the priest could not even stand to minister because the cloud of the glory got so heavy and this is what God wants to bring back in the last days if you remember last week we were talking about uh, anointed to do miracle signs and wonders everybody is uh, but especially through the ministry of the prophets and apostles this last days move of glory is going to happen Hosea 12 and 10 through the ministry of the apostles and prophets the forerunners the Luke 1 7 17 forerunners of God going before in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children, the hearts of the children back to the father, disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make a people ready, prepared for the Lord. So let's go and look, let's look at some scripture. I hope I got the scripture on there. Let's look at Exodus 19 right now. I'm going to show you the manifestation of the glory. Okay, so let's look at Exodus 19, Exodus 33 and 34, Exodus 24 and Exodus 40. Okay, um, I'm going to actually start in, um, let's first start in Exodus, uh, this is back in Moses' time, Tabernacle of Moses, this is the children of Israel, uh, and then they had the Tabernacle of David built, um, but this is where I was talking about 1 Kings chapter 8, the Temple of Solomon, and this is back when the glory at that time was uh, very powerful. This is when God really manifested himself to Israel, to Moses, uh, and to the 70 elders and Joshua. And he noticed that back then, we didn't, we, there was a veil. There was a veil, and I'm going to talk about the veil that covered, you can look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, talks about in the new covenant, we're in the new covenant now, established on Hebrews 4, uh, through eight established on better promises so anything that they could do in the Old Testament and this is what I teach in miracle signs and wonders we can do even more now 
John 14 and 12 said, Jesus said, greater works shall you do than me because I go to the Father. So if they had the glory and the manifestations of the glory clouds and an ecstatic realm of prophecy where they could literally be slain in the spirit, back then we should up more have the glory, the weighty presence of God in our meetings here in this, in the new covenant, in the dispensation, this dispensation. So let's look at uh, Exodus 19 verses 16. And it came to pass, verses 16 and 17, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were um, thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and a voice, the trumpet, exceeding loud so that all the people was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. Look at this, Exodus chapter uh, 19 verses 16 and 17 and Moses brought the people out to meet with God and they stood la 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 sakataya at the nether part of the mount listen to this thank you Holy Ghost the Mount Sinai was altogether a, a smoke hallelujah because the Lord descended upon in a fire and in and the sparks thereof as, uh, ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. Hallelujah! And when the voice of the trumpet was sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him in a voice. This is Hallelujah! If we could hear Moses, could hear God's voice audibly. Back then, we're established in a new covenant under better promises. We can hear God's voice audibly. Notice the heavens were open when Jesus was, uh, when the Spirit of God came down and lighted upon Jesus. And remember on the tra Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17, and I'm going to go deeper into transfiguration when we get into second, our transformation and being transformed uh, when we get into 2 Corinthians a little bit later, 3. Uh, talking about the veil being moved, but this transformation, the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17, this is when the heavens were open, and notice a voice came out and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Notice that's a deep realm of prophecy right there. There is where we could, and the three, uh, Peter, James, and John that were there. He chose the, the three disciples that were closest to him to go there. And they were so they were so enamorated by the glory of God that they literally, Peter, he, he wanted to make tabernacles. He just didn't even know what to do in the presence. This is that weighty presence of God that we want to get back that the ministers couldn't even stand. It said the ministers couldn't even stand to minister. Let's look now at um, Exodus. Keep going. Exodus 24, and then I'm going to go right into 33. Let's look at Exodus 24, verse 10. And they saw God, listen to this, they saw God of Israel, and there was under him his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, a body of heaven in his clearness. Exodus 24, and 11, and upon the nobles, of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. They sat down and ate and drank with God. Listen, as he appeared, just like Jesus appeared in John 20 and ate with the disciples. Jesus can appear. If he could appear, this is, if God can appear and eat with us, just like the angel of the Lord fed prophet Elijah uh, when he was tired in 1 Kings chapter 19, he went to sleep and the angel of the Lord brought uh, came and uh, made him a cake and an and a oil, you know, a cruise of oil and said to get up and eat because the journey is long. This is God can manifest with us. Angels can manifest. Jesus can manifest to us even as he did and to the disciples in John 20. Look, at, here we are in Exodus 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me unto the mount. And be there, I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, and thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up. His minister Joshua and Moses went up into the Mount of God. Listen, he chose those that are close to him, just like Jesus did on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John, Moses, Moses and Joshua were able to go up to the Mount to the glory of God. Listen, Exodus 24 and 14. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us. 
He told them to wait at the bottom of the mountain till we come again unto you. And he told Aaron and her, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him go unto them. Exodus 24 and 15. And Moses went up into the mount, and the cloud covered the mount. Exodus Exodus 24 and 10. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days and seven. On the seventh day, he called out. Listen to this. On the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the mist of the glory cloud. Hallelujah. He called to Moses un, under, out of the mist of the glory cloud after six days he was un, into, the, into the glory. Just like if we get into the glory of God and we begin to fast and pray and press into the Spirit. Listen, sometimes the days will go by, seven, eight days, because there's no time in the realm of the Spirit. It's like we can be in the glory, the docks of the God will fall, because we're outside of time. We're literally outside of time. We're not in Kronos, we're in Cairo, supernatural time. And this is what they did. They went up to the top of the mount. But notice Aaron and Hur had to stay at the bottom, only Moses and Joshua. So God will choose those who are seeking God, those the eyes of the Lord are going throughout the earth looking for those who are strong and those who are seeking him, after him. And look at verse 17, 24, 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount and the eyes of the children of Israel. They're at the bottom looking at this. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount and Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Could you imagine? He went up into that cloud and he didn't come back. This is why Aaron and Hur were given charge and they started made the golden calf. They said, what happened to this man, Moses? Just like we do, sometimes we get into the glory of God, the move of God, the last day's move. But some of us are out uh, doing other things and we begin to worship idols. That's what happened to the children of Israel. With, with And sometimes if leaders aren't right in the church, is what the Lord's saying, then they'll lead the people astray. But we need Joshua and Moses type leaders leaders that will look and seek back for the glory of God, says the Lord tonight. Now look at Exodus 33. This is what I like about Exodus 33 and 4. Moses Moses saw this. Okay, this, this is a continuing story, really. He saw this glory. He was in this glory. Look at Exodus 33 and 7. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of con congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle at, of the congregation with that which is out the camp. And it came to pass Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people uh, rose up, stood every man of him at the tent door, and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, Exodus 33, 9, Moses entered into the tabernacle, and there it is again, the cloudy pillar, there's the glory, descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses, hallelujah, the Lord talked with Moses through this, the glory, the cloudy, the glory cloud, and all the people saw, Exodus 33 and 11, exceedingly this cloudy pillar, uh, and they st stand at the tabernacle of the door, and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door, and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, and his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Here's Joshua hungry for the Lord. Joshua stayed right by Moses. Notice Joshua is like Samuel, the young prophet Samuel, where Samuel laid by in 1 Kings or First Samuel 3 through 5, he laid next to the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. This was the condensed presence of the Lord back in the Old Testament. Joshua, he was another one that was hungry and thirsty for the Lord, and he stood by the leader, Moses, who was getting the glory of God, that some of it overflow of the Spirit might fall off on him. This is what happens when you get in the presence of great leaders, great prophets, great men and women of God. That Mo You have to be hungry and thirsty, though. Joshua was hungry and thirsty, and he stayed there just like the young prophet Samuel did 
uh, when the Ark of the Covenant, he laid next to it. And do you notice in First Samuel chapter 3 that that is when God called Samuel three times. Samuel the prophet was called three times when he was laying in next to the Ark of the Covenant, the condensed presence of the Lord back in the Old Testament, that Samuel uh, was called three times and he went to Eli the priest and said, did you call me? And, he, and he, of course, Eli was backslidden, so were Hophni and Phinehas, you know, but he said, no, I, I uh, go back. And if you hear another, uh, if you hear the call again, say, thy servant heareth, uh, hears thy voice that it's the Lord that is calling you. So Samuel was being called by God and he heard his voice three times. So sometimes we got to hear the voice of God. We got to get into our prayer closet. God wants to speak to us through even the manifestation of this glory cloud, the manifestation of the cloud and the pillar, just like he did with Moses. Now, Moses, now look at Moses in Exodus 33. He said, Lord, listen, Exodus 33:15. He said, if your presence doesn't go with us, how will they know us from anybody else? This is what I feel like too, Lord. If your presence doesn't go with us, let's look at Exodus 33 and 13. Now, therefore, I pray thee, I found grace in your sight, God. Show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in their sight and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with you. This is what God said. My presence shall go with thee. I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, this is Moses saying to God, If thy presence doesn't go up with me, tarry us not, take us not into this place. Take us not. If your presence doesn't go with us, God, don't even let, let's don't even go because I need your presence. Verse 16, Exodus 33, 16, For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight, and it not in, in that grace, Thou goest with us, so shall we be separated. I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. So God, he's saying, how shall we know? How shall everybody know that you have chosen us unless your presence, your glory goes with us, God? How will they know us from anybody else? So the same with us now. How is the world going to know us from anybody else if we don't have the presence and the glory of God on us? If we don't have the doxa kabod, the weight and the shekinah glory of God? And then, let's, this is this famous scripture where Moses is saying, uh, show me your glory. Show me your glory. So he said, show me your glory, Exodus 33. And, and notice what, what uh, God did. Exodus 33, 18, and he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. Exodus 33, 19, and, and he said, I will make all my goodness. Notice he asked for his glory, but God said part of his glory was his goodness. I will make my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim, hallelujah, uh, the, the name of the Lord before thee and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Exodus thirty three twenty. and he said, Thou canst not see my face for there shall no man see my face and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me that thou shalt stand upon a rock and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by thee that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock and will cover thee with my hand when I go by. When I pass by you, I'll put you in the cliff of the rock. God's hand said, I'll cover you, and you'll see my glory, my goodness. I will take away my hand, Exodus thirty-three twenty-three, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall thou not see. So we notice that glory is the goodness of God. Our Father's a good, good Father. So many of us are condemning ourselves, even in this new covenant, when we're established on uh, better promises in the covenant of grace. The Lord has given me a message tonight, even in uh, 2 Corinthians. I'm going to go through this. We're going to be done with this. I'm going to start praying. But 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Actually, I'll actually go through a little bit more than that just because I want you guys to see this is the old covenant. 
Now we can have that glory and more. We can have more manifestations of signs, wonders, miracles, of ecstatic prophets, uh, holy laughter, all the levitation, trans, uh, uh, translation, being transported in the spirit. We can go up into the third heaven just like Paul did in 2 uh, Corinthians 12. We can travel in the spirit. And I'm not talking about new age uh, uh, things like that. This is actual stuff that ecstatic prophets, mystical prophets that that we can do with this kind of glory. It's no, there's no limit. If they could do that in the old covenant, we are in the new covenant, established on better promises. Look at Second Corinthians, chapter three. I'm going to open this up a little bit about this veil. Okay. So notice Jesus when Jesus died on the cross, he was resurrected. The veil was rent. Okay, that was the old covenant. That was established on the law. Like, we are in grace now. We are under the law. We're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. So many try to uh, keep us bound under the law. And I could go through a whole teaching about what happens when you get bound under the law. Galatians chapter uh, uh, 5. We could look at it there and a couple other. But it puts you back. You fall away from grace is what happens and we, we're doing way too much preaching about the law and being saved by works. It said we shall be saved by grace through faith. It is not of works. Okay, we need to have, we need to faith without works is dead. But still we're saved by grace. And even all these things, grace is the word charis. The graces of God. Those are the things that uh, allow us anointing and the grace to do the things that we're, we're called to do uh, in the body of Christ. So let me look at this, 2 Corinthians 3. Let's look at this glory one real quick. 2 Corinthians uh, 3. I want, to, I want to teach about this veil and we'll be done real quick. Okay, look at 2 Corinthians 3. Um, and now we we're just talking about Moses, right? Okay, so let's look at 2 Corinthians 3, verse uh, 5. Uh, let's keep going down here. Um... Verse 6 and 7, we'll start there. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, for of, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Here he's saying right now, now we're in this new covenant. If we continue to teach out of the letter, we, we will, it's death. That's death, okay? So we have, we're in a better covenant right now. Verse 7, but if the ministration of death written and engraved on stones, that was the Ten Commandments that Moses went up to get, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away with, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather more glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, Hallelujah. Much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 10. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels. For if that which was done away was glorious, much, much more that which remains is more glorious. 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 12, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of, of speech, and not as Moses when he put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end which he uh, abolished. 14, but their minds were blinded, for until this day, listen to this, remains the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ Jesus. For even unto this end was Moses, when Moses is read, there is a veil over their heart. Nevertheless, listen to this, 2 Corinthians three sixteen through 18. Nevertheless, it shall be when one turns to the Lord, Jesus Christ, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. Verse 18, but we all with open face, beholding as a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed. That word right there is metamorphosized. We're metamorphosized. We're transformed into a whole new being. We are changed, hallelujah, into the same image from glory to glory 
to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we're changed literally into the same glory as Christ. Hallelujah. In the new covenant, the veil is taken away. We don't more have to go through the law. We're under grace. We're under grace. It says where sin abounds, grace abounds, super abounds. That's the word right there. Where sin abounds, grace super abounds. So, so many, this is the ministration of condemnation when we begin to preach too much out of the old covenant and we're not preaching grace out that we're established on better promises. Uh, Peter, the apostle Peter said that God has already given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. We already have the manifestation of everything. The prayers that we ask, I went through a teaching yesterday on abiding in Jesus, uh, John 15, uh, uh, and our prayers are already answered. First John uh, 5, 14 and 15 says, Herein is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything in his name, we know he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Mark eleven twenty three and 24 says, Therefore, when you pray, believe that you have received and you shall have whatsoever you say. So whatsoever you say, you shall have. If you believe, if you believe, that's all that this is all, it's just unbelief that we have. All Mark 9 and 24 says, all things are possible, Jesus said, to those who believe that they are possible. So the, all things in this new covenant, if you, if we can get the glory, gee, if Moses could see and Joshua could see that kind of glory, if the ministers in 1 Kings 8 and the temple were not even to, able to minister because the glory was so heavy that they couldn't even stand, imagine the manifestation station of the glory and the cloud and, and the signs and wonders and miracles God wants to do even through this last day's move of the spirit here in the new covenant church. So Father, we thank you tonight. We give you praise for that teaching. We thank you. I'm just praying, Lord, that this um, uh, this teaching will strengthen people, God, and get them to begin to, to seek your face again. Seek your glory, just like Moses did when he went up into the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Let us set aside those things, God, that, that are hindering us from coming deeper into your presence, into your glory, into your doxa, your weight, your kavod, and having the reputation of God. Hallelujah. And that we can take that glory and that weight and that cloudy Shekinah glory even I've seen I've been in my room many times and I've seen the actual glory cloud manifest I have a picture on one on Instagram where it was so smoky in my room I couldn't see anything I have a picture of it so you will literally angels you'll see angels and uh, manifestation of the glory cloud pillars of smoke you, all that stuff we can have all that that's when the things begin to manifest the signs and wonders uh, and different things come out of the uh, out of the realm of the spirit so, Father, we thank you for that. Uh, I see everybody on tonight. Let me look here and see who we got. Uh, hallelujah. Marty Davis, God bless you, woman of God. Drusilla Cross, God bless you. Helga Ramkin, God bless you. Uh, Pas Patsy Woodruff, Sharon, God bless you. Uh, David Sanchez, God bless you, my brother. Joy Martin, Lena Dix, Janie, hallelujah, Crystal Savage, God bless you, woman of God, Victor, God bless you, Martha, God bless you, Cassandra, Brookfield, God bless you, woman of God, hallelujah, Lord, we thank you tonight for your spirit, we thank you, Lord, that Jesus, you are, that, that according to Revelation 19.10, the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Lord, I pray tonight that the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost will be activated even on this line according to 1 Corinthians 12 and uh, Romans 12, that the functions and according to Ephesians 4, that the fivefold doma offices and the charismatic gifts will be activated tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, open the mouth of your prophet and begin to speak to your people tonight. Let them, uh, let me, let your answer come to them tonight, God. 
of the things that they've been praying for. I, I feel the burden and I feel that people are need to begin to pull on this anointing. If you saw the Lord had me put a picture out and the glory, the glory is all over me. The the the, the anointing of God, because I've been fasting for the last two days. The Lord had me want to fast. He said, so that tonight when you come out, according to Matthew 18, 18 through 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am going to be in the midst. And I'm going to begin to answer people's prayers and speak to your heart, says the Lord. So I'm going to begin to go down the line and prophesy in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Ghost. I pray you come through and you speak to your people. You give answers, Lord. I pray that uh, uh, the miracle signs and wonders will be present. And Lord, according to uh, Luke 5 and 17, that the power of the Lord will be present to heal those who are sick tonight. I pray for the healing anointing to come tonight and the working of miracles in Jesus' name. According to your word in 1 Corinthians 12, let miracles and healing come tonight in Jesus for those the name of Jesus for those who are sick in their bodies tonight. Hallelujah. Patsy Woodruff, God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Lord saying unto you, uh, uh, woman of God, there's just been some struggles that you've gone through even in this last season in some areas the Lord said where you just you you had been praying and you hadn't been seeing any any answers and you even had a spirit uh, uh, like a spirit of discouragement. But I hear the Lord saying unto you tonight, daughter, I've been with you. I'm closer than ever before, and I'm ready to bring those things that you have prayed to me in your prayer closet, says the Lord, to pass. Even uh, the 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 uh, uh, there's something in a, in a in a business or something in a financial realm, some kind of financial problem that you've been praying to the Lord about. He said, I'm getting ready to break through in that financial problem. Even within the next three days, said the Lord, get ready to see a miracle come even in, in and through money, through even a mailbox or somebody giving you money to pay a bill uh, of something that you owe. I hear the Lord say something, uh, some money that you need, a miracle. So I declare and decree and prophesy a money miracle onto you tonight in Jesus name that the Lord said within the next 48 to 72 hours you will have that miracle manifested in your hands and he said that from that time forward I'm going to give you ideas of witty inventions according to Proverbs 8 and 12 and you will no more have any money problems says the Lord for I will provide those things that I have promised you daughter says the spirit of the living God hallelujah thank you Lord uh, David Sanchez God bless you man of God I hear the Lord saying unto you, man of God, you, you, you've been so faithful in this season, son, says the Lord. I, I desire to reward you, even with those secret prayers that you have been praying to me, says the Lord. Those things that you have been needing, even, even in the natural realm. I also hear for you finances. Finances are going to be released. Even miracle money. Look for miracle money. And I don't ever prophesy miracle money, so I don't even know where this is coming from. So it's coming in your mailbox and even... Uh, solutions I hear coming for you, uh, David Sanchez. God is really going to open up in this next month, I hear, uh, even connections with other people, other ministries, uh, men and women of God who literally are, are after the move of God as you are in the Lord. I hear that you're like a king. You have the heart of David. Uh, David, the King David, a king's heart. The Lord is, uh, you're after God's heart. You've gone through trials and tribulations. I hear the Lord saying, even throughout all throughout your life, that you you were forced to seek God. Uh, it seemed like even more so than other of your peers around you. But God said, "Son, I'm I I uh, you you are a majestic king in my kingdom. You are one of my chosen ones. You are going to sit next to me." On the thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel and judging the nation, says the Spirit of the Lord. So keep pressing in, David Sanchez, man of God. The Lord says he loves you, son, and he has many, many things uh, coming for you. Just continue to believe me, son, says the Lord. Continue to believe that I can do all things, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you and bless you. Uh, Crystal Savage, God bless you. Woman of God, I hear the Lord saying unto you tonight that uh, there's, I, I feel like there's somebody around you that's sick. 
and I'm going to pray for uh, healing. Maybe even, have you, have you had anything wrong in your body at all lately or in, in anybody around you that had been sick, Crystal? I don't know why I'm not getting anybody commenting. I Maybe this thing isn't, this is probably why. Uh, I'm wondering if people can even hear me. I know I had some connection problems. I see everybody, but I don't see any comments. It says everybody's listening. The devil is a liar. Let's see. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to pray uh, supernatural healing over this line tonight. Father, I, I take authority over all spirits of infirmity and all sickness and disease. Uh, we bind and we take authority over all sickness. We cauterize it in the spirit. We command every spirit of infirmity to come out of the flesh and come out of their souls. In Jesus' name, I command you to go outside of this world and I bind you to the abyss in the name of Jesus. Now I send forth the anointing of God according to Psalm 107 and 20 to and command every area in their bodies that is sick I command those areas to relax in Jesus name I release the sunlight splendor the anointing uh, out of the hand of God uh, at 1 John 4 and 17 as he is in the world so are we uh, Romans 4 and 17 says he calls those things as be not as though they were Habakkuk 3 verse 4 said you take your hand and there was sunlight splendor coming out of his hand which is the glory the anointing of God being released I'm releasing the anointing tonight for healing in Jesus name uh, so the sunlight splendor coming out of the hand of God there was the hiding place of his dunamis miracle working power so I'm sending that miracle power onto this line tonight anybody that needs healing in their body to pull on this anointing the healing anointing uh, Luke 5 and 17 is Lord is pre the power of the Lord Lord is present to heal on this line tonight. Pull on the anointing, says the Spirit of the Lord. Relieve for a miracle in your body. Mark 11, 23, 24 says, when you pray, whatsoever things you believe, and when you receive them, when you pray, you shall have whatsoever you say. So believe that you have received it even now. Now faith, Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So activate your faith tonight. Pull on this healing anointing that's uh, present that if you need healing I know you guys can't comment because nobody's commenting so something happened on I know you I'm praying you can hear me though so go ahead and pull on this healing anointing tonight if you need a miracle in your body if you need healing in your body pull on this healing tonight in Jesus name pull on the healing anointing if you need a miracle in your body or healing the Lord said uh, according to Luke 5 17 the power of the Lord is present to heal Tonight, in Jesus' name, I release the sunlight splendor. According to Habakkuk 3, verse 4, there was sunlight splendor coming out of the hand of God. Remember, uh, 1 John 4, 17 says, As he in the, is in the world, so are we. Romans 4, 17 says, He calls those things that be not as though they were. So you got to take your hand and believe that, that your hand is the hand of God. And you're sending out the, the anointing, the sunlight splendor of God and there was the high, there were horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding place of his power. That word power right there is dunamis, meaning it's miracle working power. So pull on this anointing and, and receive your healing or your miracle tonight in your body. The Lord wants to heal and recreate in people's bodies tonight. Limbs are being recreated. I even hear that somebody had uh, somebody's. Uh, intestines, you've had bad intestines, something like uh, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease in your intestines. The Lord says, I'm, I'm healing your intestines tonight. If you receive it, get up and activate your faith, says the Lord, and you can receive this tonight. I'm calling the angels of God, according to Psalm 103 and 20, to excel in strength all around. I'm calling the angel of the Lord, according to uh, uh, Psalm 37 and 4, to camp around you because you fear him, to rescue and deliver you. According According to Hebrews 1.14, are they not all ministers spirits sent forth to minister to for those who shall become heirs of salvation. So I'm sending angels and invoking angels that excel in strength. Psalm 103 and 20. Hearkening to the voice of the word of God. Bless the Lord you hosts. You ministers of his that do his pleasure. So he, they do his will. They do his pleasure. So they're being invoked tonight. 
The power of the Lord is present to heal. Luke 5, 17. God's word will not go out according to Isaiah 55 and 11 and return to him void, but it will accomplish that which it has been sent out to do and prosper where in the thing he has sent it. So I know that people aren't commenting because something's wrong with the broadcast, but still pull on this anointing because I've been in fasting and prayer for two days now. Uh, the glory is all over the anointing. Uh, the Lord said that he's healing tonight. He's healing that people uh, can receive healing and also miracles for whatever. My, I heard financial miracles earlier. I heard that checks, supernatural checks in money will be coming in mailboxes. Uh, so things that people have been needing. Even I heard uh, things like keys to houses, new houses, and, and vehicles that even through your faith. Like I said, Mark 11, 23 four, and 24, whatsoever things you, pr when you pray, believe that you have received and you shall have whatsoever uh, I think I'm still, God bless you, Prophetess Javel. I see you on. I, I don't know why nobody can comment. I would have you, uh, I, I, the connection's all off tonight. Might have to redo this another night, maybe even tomorrow night. Um, but God bless you, Prophetess. I see you on here. Uh, the Lord was saying to you, daughter, you, 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 you're moving in such great, this, this glory. I've heard, because this, uh, whole thing was about God's glory but and Moses going out into up into the mount but I hear the Lord saying the glory of God is all over you prophetess Javel Tucson the glory of God he said he's going to anoint you even greater you're going to run into some of the greats uh out there prophets and apostles that are going to see your gift and they're going to see that treasure that is hidden in you and he, they're going to literally sponsor you and take you places all over the world says the Lord even this last book that you wrote prophetess uh, that you're writing right now, that you're writing with the Lord, this is going to be the book, says the Lord, that's going to propel you to the top, says the Lord, to Prophetess Javel Tucson. The Lord said, this will be the book, daughter. This will be the book that's going to propel you, woman of God. So don't give up. Don't give up, says the Spirit of the Lord. Keep writing. Keep writing, says God. Keep writing, says the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, tonight. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. I don't know if anybody can hear me. I may start coming back on almost every other day because I really don't even want to keep going because I don't know if anybody's hearing me because they're not able to comment. I don't know what happened. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this one tonight, but I'm going to be doing some pop-up prophesying uh, and, and praying for healing and, and miracles. So uh, I'm working with Pastor Mel Bond. He's literally, we talk every day now on, on a cell phone. Like, I went to one of his miracle crusades, and, and that's my miracle. I got my miracle because literally I went to a, mir a healing, a miracle crusade on January 4th. He laid his hands on me and pardoned the gift. And then I hadn't talked to him, but all of a sudden the Lord had me call the number and say I needed some prayer. He called me back personally on his cell phone. This man probably uh, has about a million miracles. I, I, I'm not even joking. Uh, and, and he called me on his cell phone and said said uh, the Lord wanted me to talk with you and we started talking and I asked him to mentor me and he said he would and now every every day since then we've been talking he's been mentoring me I told him you know I, know I have this gift of miracles I don't really know how to use it can you help me and even that was my miracle because he said the Lord even told me to help you and I saw you at the crusade and he remembers I bought his books now I'm also reading another book called releasing the anointing and that's what I'm doing on here when you guys see me doing that, I've been trained to do this. So I'm gonna when I become back on, I'm when I do this thing with the hand and I'm release that Habakkuk 3, verse 4, the sunlight splendor. That's the anointing of healing and miracles and coming out. And we see manifestations of instant miracles, instant healing. Because I can't see anybody uh, commenting, I'm going to end this broadcast, but as he's training me, I'm going to come out and offer my services to the body of Christ. Now, listen, because I've had to press in for this, people 
we're all, you're going to get real healing and miracles when I come out, but you've got to pull on the anointing one, and then you've got to sow into the anointing. You can't just expect to get something for nothing all the time. Now, God gives away that stuff free, but at times you want to activate your faith. When you feel, when anybody's preaching, or when there's prophesying, or the spirit of prophecy is activated, or miracles, when the anointing is at the highest is when you want to sow a seed into that anointing. And this is just what I need to train people because God wants to prosper his people in these last times. And even he's telling me even that I need to be sowing more. So I, he said in 2 Corinthians 9, I put up some scriptures there that he gives uh, uh, seed to the sower and bread to the eater and that he, he loves a cheerful giver. So God wants us to be able to give, give more, because if we, it says to what measure, meaning that word metron is measure, to what measure we give, it will be measured back to us. So this is the principle of the kingdom that the Lord has been having me teach on the principles it's just like forgiveness is the same thing to whatever level you forgive somebody it will be meet that word is measured metroned back to you so the same with giving so if you're saying okay i'm going to be a kingdom millionaire and a builder of the kingdom but you haven't sowed a seed you know, a uh, 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 hundred a dollar seed, which will bring you back a thousand, right? That's multiplication. And then you got to believe God for the ten thousand dollar seed, which will bring a hundred thousand. And I've seen this happen. It's not a hoax. I've seen it. I haven't got there myself, but like I say, I'm praying to have, be a kingdom millionaire or maybe even a billionaire. You know what? But, but God's going to test you. God's going to test you for it. Okay, so God's going to test you. So I call it the billion flow. Like, if you can't believe it for it, whatever you're going to have, whatever you say. So Mark 11, 23 and 24 says, whatsoever things you say when you pray. So if we want to see a billion souls uh, harvest, if we want to see a billion souls uh, for salvation, and we want to see a billion souls get miracles, and we want to have uh, a billion dollars, we have to say it. We have to continue to think it. What well, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we have to think it first. It goes into the mind, it goes into the spirit, and then it goes into the natural. That's the process. And this is all a book I'm reading on releasing the anointing. And I'm gonna be teaching more on this because I'm being mentored, like I said, by one of the greatest evangelist miracle workers in the la in these last days. People might not even know his name, but God knows his name. Believe that. And so this man is teaching me, and I don't take it lightly that the Lord has chosen this man to literally mentor me, literally like daily on the phone. I talked to him daily on a cell phone, and I was at his miracle crusade. Literally, 99.5 people he per percent of people he prays for gets healing and miracles instantly. Okay, so God, I'm going to honor this anointing. And so when I begin to pop out and begin to prophesy and, uh, you know, just like sending the word, Psalm 107 and 20 says he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. So the word can be sent. Remember, the greatest faith that Jesus said was the centurion's faith. I think it is in uh, Mark chapter 8. He said that centurion, there was no greater faith, and he wasn't even a believer. But it's because he understood authority and the workings of the kingdom of heaven. The principles, those are the keys to the kingdom, of the kingdom, not to, but of. The keys of the kingdom is, is one of those keys. The world can use those keys. Us Christians surely ought to be able to use those keys, okay? The world can use those same principles to unlock finances, to unlock miracles, to get the things that they're tr getting. We surely should be able to do it, okay? So Christians, we need to be stepped up to the plate. Let's believe for the billion dollars uh millionaires and to the the wealth of the wicked to be transferred to the righteous right let's believe for the billion soul harvest let's believe for billion people getting miracles under tent crusades this last day's move of glory this is what this whole message is on the glory of god the doxa the reputation the kavad the weight the shekinah the glory of god the glory cloud and it, it's been manifest and i've been in prayer 
the last two days and fasting, and I've been seeing the glory cloud all over the place. I It got so foggy last night, the Lord woke me up. It was like a little tap on my shoulder. I didn't know if it was an angel or it was the Lord or what, but it was like all of a sudden he said, look, and it was like there was a little light from my computer coming, and I saw this cloud where I couldn't even see I couldn't even see, but I could see the little clouds, right? It was like the, the glory, the Shekinah glory, the cloudy pillar that I just talked about. And then I smelt some, I'm reading this book by Prophetess Javel. She's on here now. Uh, the Roman Jesus. You guys got to go get that book. But talking about, she's the one that's talking about these aromas. Well, she said you would get these aromas. And I'm starting to smell this. As she talks about these aloes and uh, uh, calamus and all this stuff, the aroma of Jesus, you got to go over. She's on here, Javel, Prophet Javel Tuss, and go over to her uh, page and get that book, uh, the the aroma of Jesus. But literally, Prophetess, I know you're on here, so you, you, I smelt some new aromas last night, and I saw this glory cloud. So that's the manifestation. Last week was talking about you. We're all anointed to do signs and wonders. That's the manifestation of signs and wonders. Now, miracles are uh, uh, then, you, you know, instant healing and miracles. Those are different. But signs and wonders are those kind of manifestations of the gold dust, the, the holy laughter, the, the aromas, all those things, you know, the, the, that we see. Those are just God showing himself. Those are signs and wonders. But we also got to see these miracles. So I'm going to go ahead and end this, but look for me to come out. And like I'm teaching, if you guys want to uh, increase in, you have to say it. Mark 11, 23, whatsoever you say. And in notice in Mark 11, 23, it says you have to say three times more than you believe. So Mark 11, 23, and 24, whatsoever things you believe when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have whatsoever you say. So Mark 11, 23 says Say three times whatsoever you say. So three times more than you believe. Mark eleven twenty four. So you say you have it. So I'm going to say I have it three times more than I actually. When I'm going to believe it anyway. But you know what I mean. So I'm I'm speaking it. I'm speaking. I'm a millionaire. I'm a kingdom millionaire. I, I'm going to see a thousand. You know, a, a billion soul harvest. A million soul harvest. I'm going to dream again. I'm going to go out and I'm going to evangelize and I'm going to see people healed uh, and I'm delivered and set free. You know, this is, I don't care about the money. The only reason I want the money is to be able to go do what God has called me to do and, and to give to the kingdom. I want to be able to give. Two, the more you give, the more you can receive. So, Father, we thank you. And if there's anybody on this line that you uh, haven't accepted Jesus Christ into your life, we just pray with you tonight that you you will pray this simple salvation prayer and know that if you pray this prayer uh, with me that you are saved, born again, according to John chapter 3, uh, verse 16 and 17, So and also Romans 10, 9 and 10. So Father, um, tonight we just pray that if there be anybody on this line uh, that wants to receive Jesus Christ into their heart, that they'll pray this prayer. Father, I come to you as a as a broken child, and I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sin, and I ask you to wash me in your blood, Jesus, and bring me into your kingdom, and make me your son or your daughter. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So we, we we thank you for coming on. Look for me to come on um, and just pop up. I'm sorry that people couldn't comment. I don't know what happened. I'm just hoping that everybody can even hear the, the message and go back and listen at least to the message on the glory. But God said it's time to bring back the glory. The glory uh, had departed from the Ichabod, from Hophni, Phinehas, from that era. But this is the last day's era, and this is the, 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 the um, glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former. Haggai chapter 2, 
uh, there's a word the Lord had give me out, had me give out for the month of April, atomic awakening in the church of the God's latter house of glory, Haggai chapter two. So the latter house shall be great of the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. So the latter of this end time, this latter house of glory, this end time move of glory is going to be so much greater than what I was reading out of Exodus 33:19, the tabernacle of Moses and David and all that. And the glory was so great then that they couldn't even stand to minister the ministers can you imagine what the glory will be now the glory on our tent meetings on our revivals when we go out okay so the lord is waiting for us greater work shall we do john 14 and 12 than jesus because he went to the father so i thank you tonight god bless everybody i love you Look for me again. I'll be coming out again where you guys can comment. I know you can't comment. I'm just hoping you can even hear this thing. So I'll be coming out again probably tomorrow night or something. I'll just pop out and start praying for people and prophesying. I'll probably come out live too, actually, you know, uh, 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 not just audio. So, all right. Love you guys.